In this rebuild, we will take over Sporting Gijón. They are owned by Orlegi Sports, who operate Mexican clubs Santos Laguna and Atlas. We will look to bring in some talent from the Mexican League with the end goal of winning Sporting Gijón its first major trophy. The likes of Andres Guardado and Rafa Marquez made the jump to Europe from Club Atlas, and I think that Jeremy Marquez should be the next player to make that jump. He had a very interesting closing tournament for the club, uh, as of course Atlas won both the opening and closing tournaments of the 21-22 to season, and he had two big goals for his achievers in the playoffs and was sent off in a very questionable very questionable call but the talent is there and I think he's a player who certainly needs to make that move to Europe sooner or later then of course Santos Laguna has also sent several Mexican players to Europe such as Nestor Araujo and Gerardo Ortega and I think Omar Campos he's actually been linked to clubs in Europe such as Anderlecht but the move has not yet materialized so we're going to help him make that jump to Europe you can see he has shown great potential and he's with so considering how dynamic potential is in this in this game uh him and jeremy marquez with both showing great potential could end up being you know stars and that's something that we certainly want to see happen some other players on the on the squad uh juan ferni otero is actually another player uh who ca came from santos laguna uh and he went to club america and then he was sent in real life on loan but actually uh, there's a big history of gentlemen's agreements between mexican league owners so we're going to consider this as like a a favor uh, from the Club America um, owners. But uh, you can see some of the transfers we did make in, in that first season, the history, so that we you can see how much we spent. Uh, pretty pretty decent loans out as well. Um, actually sent some players even to America, so you can see, actually see that link. So 3, three million euros for Marquez. 4 million euros was for, for, for Campos, who is a very promising left back, and I think he's going to end up doing fairly well for us. But uh, in that first season... Uh, halfway through it in the fifth spot in the table uh, so it seems like we're going to be fighting for automatic promotion in, in these playoff spots it's a pretty tight race uh, between all these different clubs now in the Spanish Cup uh, the first round we were able to get through on a 3-0 victory uh, we have you know some pretty good players we have Johnny on the left uh, left wing Otero on the right and then we're going to go into the second round of the Spanish Cup and see how we fare and in the end we were knocked out in the second round I do want to try to highlight the competitions a little bit more um, as I feel like it's something maybe I didn't do in the rebuild is focusing on the Cubs but in the end we did actually end up making the pro promotion playoff semi-final and it's going to be an interesting one against Almeria so ended up being fifth pretty much you know, what I was expecting unfortunately Two points away from the automatic promotion spot, which would made things obviously much easier. But now getting into uh, the second leg, we were down 3-1. Came back here to score a goal to make things 3-2. Uh, Otero obviously has been a big, big player for us in this first season. Uh, the guys like Pedro Diaz, as well as uh, our center defenseman, Carguera, are very good as well. Uh, Brugovic, unfortunately, not able to make that effort on target as it was blocked. Uh, now in the 77th minute, uh, we try to play the ball in behind. This is actually the the away leg, so we have to technically score two goals. But Otero, he has a good shot into a good spot, and Diaz is going to finish that chance. He's been playing that center mid spot for us, uh, and he's doing a good job there finishing that chance. But seems like it might be a little bit too little too late in the stoppage time. One more chance it looks like to try to uh, take down this deficit and move on to the finals, the promotion playoffs, and the ball is played through. But a huge save in the hands from the Almeida goalkeeper as that was our chance to go through the finals. Unfortunately, we did not take it. So a good finish, you could say, in the first season, but obviously not perfect. Uh, some of these players have grown quite a bit. Pedro Diaz, as you mentioned before, the center mid is doing good. Otero up to 74, uh, you know, 15 goals in the season from our, from our uh, midfield is, is good. Of course, we had a guy like Carlos Izquierdos who did spend some time in Mexico as well, but Ocal, who is a player we had on loan in the first season, is going to join us uh, in this second season after being uh, made a free agent. So that's going to be some depth we can add to the side. Now he's going to be a player can we have throughout here. But Cote, who is a left back in the first season, is going to be retiring. Uh, and then Omar uh, Campos is actually now to an exciting prospect. And then John Pacheco, a 21-year-old center back from Real Sociedad. He's not exactly broken through to the squad, and I think we do need some depth. We need some players to actually kind of help us make that jump, I think, to get the either win the title or get that automatic promotion spot. As we were a bit weak at that center back role, at uh, the center back spot, and now that Carlos Esquerdo did leave our side. So, I'm uh, going to end up making this, this signing official 
and try to push on and bring some other players up as well. Another Atlas player we're going to bring in Julian Quinones, a interesting winger slash striker. He's pretty pacey, very athletic, and he's a guy who can fill three different roles, so that's going to help us out uh, as far as depth goes. I mean, we've got quite a few players we've been looking at, and I think he's one who's going to fit us. Had to pay a fairly hefty fee, but I mean, we're basically transferring money between ourselves. Obviously, the ownership groups are the same. I think it was about 11 million euros we spent and uh, as we finalize the contract there, he's a player who's going to slot slight into the striker role for us in that first season. You can see, obviously, Pacey, good stamina, agile. He's a player who's going to do well. Uh, very good dribbler. Finishing still needs to improve. Um, passing isn't amazing, so he's certainly a more of a... He's a different type of striker. As we'll have Johnny on the left wing here. Quinones up top. Otero on the right. Diaz and Marquez as the center mids. Graguero as the center defensive mid. Campos, Marocal, Pacheco... Cote, and then Marinho is our goalkeeper. So uh, you can see the history of the transfers in the season. They ended up actually getting 3.6 million euros for one of our players, which helped us fund the other transfers. The other player went out on a permit, and of course, Julian Quinones and Pacheco were the big transfers in, spending a com about a combined 17 million on them and a decent free transfer as well we brought in. Uh, so halfway through the second season, in the third spot in the league, as it might be another fight for the promotion playoff spot. Hopefully, could push into the into the um, Almeri actually, who we did who did knock us out, did end up not getting promoted automatically. So look at the Spanish Cup results in the first round. We did end up grabbing a victory, but in the second round, we do run into a better comp competition. Obviously, in Santa Vigo, who have, for some, whatever reason are playing Emery more as a center defense mid, and do knock us out in the end in that second round. So moving on to look at the rest of the season here. Uh, we actually did end up winning the title, or, or pushing for the title, excuse me. Uh, 38, 38 games played, but yeah, you can see pretty much in the end, it, it was it was us that were able to prevail after being in the playoff spots. Just kind of finish, finish this match up and uh, look at the title celebration as we can bring our first trophy technically. But of course, we eventually went to either bring a Spanish Cup, a European trophy, or a, uh, you know, La Liga trophy to our sides. But a uh, great pass from Diaz to play here to Julian Quinones. And he's going to finish that very cleanly, hitting off of the post and in. Uh, love to see that. Good running behind as the 1 0 is going to put us into position to push further on and, and guarantee that title victory. But now Otero showcasing his ability. Quinones is going to touch it down and a clean, smooth finish after that close control. A little bit of a toe poke there is going to make things 2-0 in the 10th minute. But uh, good work. Beautiful. As it looks like the title celebrations are going to be on here. So the first, in two seasons, able to get promoted. I think that's decent. Um, obviously very close in the first one. Going to probably play that first leg, but I want to make things a bit more interesting. Uh, that's I do want to have like kind of an interesting progression. Yeah, that's always been kind of my, my goal is trying to be somewhat realistic, as, as realistic as possible. Obviously, some scenarios are not completely in that sense. But that so La Liga, two champions we are. 24 goals from Quinones, 15-11 from Otero, 12-12 and 12 from Pedro Diaz, who's been playing well as a center mid. Six goals, 11 assists from Jeremy Marquez, really having a breakout season. Johnny, good for us in these lower divisions. Uh, six goals, seven assists, and a few other guys contributing quite a bit. You can, If you want to glance at some of the overall, some of these players, you can see Campos, notably up to an 80. Uh, so, yeah, some big growth from these players. Guillermo has a decent backup player. Pedro Diaz up to 78. Uh, Marquez was up to 78 as well. Uh, so, we do have to bring some more depth to the side, especially in the center back positions. That's where we're, we're lacking. So, Mohaid is going to be an option as a center back, or per, currently playing at Gank and uh, we're going to play, pay, pay about 13.5 million euros for him. He's going to give us cover as both a center back and right back, an area that we certainly need a bit more depth and competition at. So he's going to be a good player for us. Now, Santiago Munoz, he's a guy who uh, obviously you know came up through the Santos uh, Academy, and I think it would be interesting to give him his first chance really at uh, – some some quality first team football because and at the moment he's at Newcastle he's really playing for the U23s but I think playing obviously uh, for a La Liga side would be a big upgrade and uh, bring the dream to I don't even know what I'm saying the dream is <laughs> to Hijon and he's gonna be end up probably slotting in eventually as a starting striker maybe not right away but now another player as we're kind of linking using that Club America link there's actually been just so many players who actually went from Santos to America 
So I think you could kind of see this connection eventually happening as well. Obviously, in lo we had Otero coming on loan. He's on loan in real life and kind of be that transfer permanent. Uh, Santos Laguna has sold players like, uh, you know, Diego Valdez, the Chilean inter international, Darwin Quintero, uh, rest in peace, Ch Chucho Bonite Benitez, or Oriva Parata, and Matias Vuelos. Uh, so a pretty big, interesting, you know, kind of uh, history between the two clubs and a kind of affiliation there. But actually, we're going to have Santiago Munoz start in this first season. we we'll end up spending a decent amount of money. Sebastian Caseras as well is joining us, as you saw, from Club America. And, yeah, so we've got some players who I think can help us make the jump. First season is probably be, could be end up being tough, maybe fighting relegation, but I do think some of the signings, especially when he's helping us improve defensively, is going to be not too bad. But actually, mid-table, it looks like now, you can see Villarreal actually in the title race, along with Real Sociedad. And uh, Barca, Atletico, Real Madrid, Sevilla, not too far away as well. But uh, at the moment, in 12th place, halfway through the season. And it um, looks like we're pretty safe in relegation as Celta is pretty bad. That we're only at 15 points. And moving on to the Spanish Cup. First round, we did end up going through on penalties. And the second round, uh, we'll see if we can have... A, it's a much better, actually, draw. But unfortunately, things did not work out as we did get up. and up getting knocked out in that exciting 4-3 matchup. So... Seems like the Spanish Cup may not be for us just yet. Unfortunately, John Pacheco, who's ended up uh, transferring in the second season, now wants to leave. I guess he wasn't happy with his playing time or whatever or contracts. In the end, in that third, this first season in La Liga, we had, actually had a pretty comfortable mid-table finish in 13th uh, and the 14th, excuse me, as uh, a lot of our players are developing really just a good comfort zone between us and that relegation. Uh, area we actually didn't have the best second half of the season so that good first half that strong first half did help us quite a bit but you can see Fernando Otero growing to 79 13 goals five assists uh Pedro Diaz 12 goals seven 12 goals and three from Quinones 10 and three from Munoz three and two from Marquez and again you can look to so see some of the players 84 Omar Campos has grown a lot um, and a few other guys you'll see here. No, Mosolbigui Rosas has grown quite a bit. Marquez up to an 82. Walter up to 79. Uh, as we'll move on to the next season here. Um, basically, mostly it was transfers out. You can see Campuzano and the being sold. A player who didn't really use. Pacheco in the end, 7.2 million euros leaving us. But uh, we do need some depth at fullback. So we're going to bring on Tomas Tavares. Interesting right back. Does have a game face. I always kind of like having that. So as we try to strengthen our squad, as we push to some our European hopes, I mean, after mid-table, pushing for a, a top 10 spot would be certainly be a good idea uh, and end up, end up bringing in Tomas Tavares on a, uh, I'd say, decent deal. Uh, he's going to be in that right-back spot for us. Uh, of course, of course, Otero, Munoz, Quinone is up top. Pretty similar, you know, Diaz, Marquez, Raguera. Campos, Mujahid, Caseros will, will be uh, the uh, other side of the defense. May need some improvements on the goalkeeper. But first half of the season, my God, in fourth place, fighting for you know a Champions League spot. I don't know what it is, but just stunning potential and everything does really make things overpowered. And that's something I really wish we could change. I do think dead plans can be really overpowered at times, but... Uh, as we move on here in the Spanish Cup, first round, we end up knocking out Avisa. We obviously beautiful line, uh, island uh, and end up going through. Unfortunately, do walk into Atletico Madrid. We'll see if we can actually get through against them in the second season as they're, they're a good side. But we actually end up beating them. And it seems like uh, we're going to have a quarterfinal matchup now. But it seems like generally when we end up having good runs against the better teams, it's against the... The weaker sides that we, we have trouble with, and that was the case here as we get knocked out by Oche and a 4-1 defeat in the quarterfinals. So, so close to maybe getting a trophy. But in the end, we do end up grabbing that fifth spot. A perfect season with 69 points. Nice. How beautiful. Let's uh, wrap up this rebuild now because that's that's what we went in it on. But, nah. Uh, good good re results, obviously. Barca won. You can see the, the Champions League. Not the Champions won the World League. Won La Liga. What am I saying? But 82 overall. 20 good goals. Four assists. Otero had a big breakout season. 82 overall. Also, Quinones. 14-3. 14-4 from Santiago Munoz. 11-9 from Diaz. 7-8 from Marquez. 11 assists from Omar Campos. Oh, my God. Uh, Campos up to an 85. So, turning into really a, a high-level uh Fullback, a lot of our defenders, you can see Tomas Tavares up growing to the 81, Rivera up to an 80, so 84 overall. These two guys, you know, Rivera and Diaz were with us from the start, and it's kind of cool to see 
them growing in that way along with Otero. But of course, I do think it's kind of the thing about Daniel Pencho. It can be a bit interesting. But now moving on in this next season in La Liga, Diego Costa, high quality goalkeeper, spent over 50 million euros for him. He's going to be a player that can really put us over the top. It's just need a good goalkeeper in this game, especially. Uh, as you simulate and all that, it can be pretty important. Now, I'm going to bring in some depth in the center mid spots. We literally lack depth, so I'm going to bring in Sergio Dada there. He is a player, obviously, has tons of experience in La Liga. He's going to be helping us out uh, in, in some important spots. I mean, given important, he's not going to start, though, honestly. Uh, so, for a decent fee, 31 year old experienced center mid, he's going to help us out and improve our bench quite a bit. Uh, as you can see, still kind of pretty similar. Otero Munoz, Quinones. Uh, the attack, Diaz, Marquez, Guerrero, but the main thing is obviously stretching that defense. We have a lot more depth. We really be, we're always kind of run on thin squads. But as we move into the Europa League, we got Marseille, Rosenberg, Willem as our group, and it's going to be an interesting one. Uh, but in the in La Liga, uh, Atletico Madrid seems to be running away with, with the title, but we're again in third at the moment, fighting for a Champions League spot. And uh, a point behind Barcelona and two points behind us are Real Madrid and Valencia not too far away either. But uh, in the uh, Europa League, we didn't uh, end up actually winning our group. So we'll see how the draws go for us as we move on. Now we're going to bring in Saul on the next season on the uh, pre-contract, another player. who are bringing in for, de in for depth purposes. That's something that's really important as you simulate for these rebuilds. You need players uh, really who can fill in when the game needs you. To, to put in some players in those certain occasions. The Spanish Cup, we get knocked out by Levante. So can't really get that domestic cup yet, it looks like. So in this, we were up 1-0 in after the first leg against Porto, and we ended up going through uh, after a 1-1 result. So decent result there. Moving on, moving on against Gladbach, 3-1 uh, victory in the first leg. Santiago Munoz with a big performance. And now in the second leg, see if we can continue that on. Uh, if not, you know, Gladbach actually made things pretty interesting going 2-1. Uh, thankfully, we scored quite a few goals in that first leg. Now, moving on against Inter here. So, they've got a strong squad, obviously. And that's going to be one that's going to be tough to compete against. I think they had actually had a Pog win game. 3-1 victory for Inter. Can we come back in the second leg? Make things interesting. Obviously, the, the team is improving so much. We just kind of look at it in these in these screens here. They end up beating us and knock us out of the Europa League 4-3. Uh, was the final aggregate score. So in the end, a Champions League finish in fourth. Quinones ran away with the uh, Pichichi. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm fucking very childish. But 29-5, and five, Quinones, 16-6, six, Otero, 11-11, Marquez. So some pretty good results all around from our team. You can see Campos up to an 86, Caceres up to an 81, along with Muhayid. Pero Cal, decent backup at the 77. Uh, Tavares up to 82, Pedro Diaz up to 87, Marquez up to 86, 86 also is uh, Otero, 84 Quinones. So at this point, uh, our team is kind of maxing out here. We're going to bring in some more depth though at the center back spot with Joaquin, a player at Am Amerias who uh, obviously have had some history with in this rebuild. And they've got some, he's, he's got some quality attributes. He's going to help us out, obviously. Uh, I think at this point, it's just more about depth because I, I don't like to move too far away from some of the key signings we made. I feel like there's kind of a, an end point that I a lot I like to have with rebuilds. And that's why I don't exactly just go in the end, you know, signing every fucking big name possible to finally win the Champions League. But uh, we do go for Francisco Tringali, who's a, another interesting player. Uh, he's going to help us out with some depth on the wing. I think Otero is very good. Um... And, but I think the main thing is Munoz has improved an amazing amount in his rating. So sometimes we can move Quinones into the striker spots and have Francisco play out on the wing. And I do like the fact that he's game face. So he's going to be one of our big signings this season as well to help give us some additional depth there. You see Otero, 86, 80s Munoz, Quinones, 84. So uh, with Francisco on the bench at 83, we could certainly move Quinones to the striker spot and Francisco to the wing. So Joaquin would be a backup center back at the moment. Um, and yeah, the, the depth is a lot better as we have an interesting group against Liverpool, Lille and Dynamo Zagreb. So that's going to be interesting one. I think it could be, could be a bit tricky with uh, Liverpool, Lille, but to end up halfway through the season in the third, third spots, 42 points, just two points away from Real Madrid, as it seems like we're just all playing at a very high level and it's going to be an interesting finish to this season for sure. 
as we we'll move on to take a look at how the Champions League group ended. Um, and yeah, ended up actually winning the group. Uh, Liverpool was knocked out in the end. Uh, so yeah, it was a very tricky group for everyone involved, it seemed like. Now moving to the Spanish Cup. In the first round against Levante, we end up grabbing the victory after they knocked us out in the previous Spanish uh, previous season. I believe it was a 2-1. It was, and having the depth we do have now is certainly a big thing and helps us out as we move on now against Sevilla. In the second round with a 1-0 victory. Uh, and this seems like it could possibly be the year that we have a decent cup run and actually did end up knocking out sporting, uh, knocking out Barcelona. I don't know if I'm saying sport. We are sporting, knocking out Barcelona here. And now Espanol, a good result against them as well, is going to really push us on in that first leg. Second leg, it's going to be an interesting one. It's one we're going to showcase eventually, I think. But uh, I end up getting a tough draw against PSG in the round of 16, but end up winning 2-0. Now we're going to move to the second leg of the semifinals of the Spanish Cup. And yeah, it's going to be an interesting one as I do think Espanol has really good good player. Sorry, my dog would not stop barking. But <laughs> moving to the 52nd minute, it was a very boring match in that in that first part of it. But uh, ball played to Diaz, unfortunately misses quite awfully. Had a big chance to make us, uh, you know, go ahead in this match. But uh, the ensuing goal kick, we're going to see us win the header. And now Otero is going to play a pretty simple 1-2. He's going to get behind the defense, but unfortunately cannot finish his chance, as a huge save that was from the Espanol goalkeeper. Now moving to the 59th minute, Gorguera is going to play the ball through here to thick. Santiago Munoz is going to use his thickness, and he's going to turn and finish that chance after having the defender on his back, putting the team on his back in the end is what he did there. So 1-0, going up 2-1 on aggregate with a good chance to put ourselves in a big spot and making a Spanish Cup final. And moving forward here, the ball is played in a cute spot. And it's played back cutely and it's finished cutely. And it's going to be a 2-2 two, two aggregate now. So looks like it all ended up going to um, the extra time. And that's what it ended up going to as it was 1-1 one, one in both matches. So clearly quite even it was. But uh, 98th minutes, uh, Espanol is going to play some pretty good football. Some poor defending, Tavares plays his main onside, and it's going to be a 2-1 lead thanks to Alexis Vega, who actually played very well for me in my PSV rebuild. A big part of that rebuild, if you want to check that out, another Mexican player. And Julian Quinones ended up playing through, ends up beating his man and being played in behind, finishes his chance very cutely. And that's kind of what we talked about before with uh, Francisco playing on the right wing and Quinones moving in uh, as a striker sometimes, and now... Marquez with a huge chance to put us ahead in that first half of stoppage time. Unfortunately, can't finish that opportunity. But now, Otero is going to be playing Quinones through. And you can showcase some of that cute little agility. Ball play to Gorgara to Marquez. And that it was some very good combination play. As that will make things 3-2 and 4-3 on aggregates. As our man, Jimmy Marquez, obviously kind of a big part of this career, of this rebuild, being an Atlas product. A guy we obviously kind of showcased as the, one of the big transfers for us earlier on. Ends up coming up big. But now, ball played here to Francisco. is going to play the ball to Quinones. And a cute finish again from him. He's been very clinical, has has Quinones been. And he's going to be kind of the man of this season, it feels like. He's coming up with some big goals. And he's going to put us through to the Spanish Cup final. But uh, in the end, we actually end up going through on penalties against PSG. 4-3 in our next matchup. It's not going to get any easier in Champions League as we go from PSG to Manchester City. Oh, this, the draw are, loves us. I mean, winning our group has not helped us out too much. But La Liga, uh, we actually are 61 points on top right now, but in the quarterfinals now against Manchester City. And they really just kind of, they, they dicked us down. They just have too good, of a, too good of a team. As you'll see in the end, they ended up beating us 3-1 on aggregate. Uh, it was a bit more difficult than we would have liked. Obviously, that draw, considering the fact that we were first in our group, was very unkind to us. But now, moving on to the Spanish Cup final, a chance to bring the first major trophy to Sporting Gijón. I love how it really just says Gijón. I mean, that's I'm guessing that's their their, their sponsorship is in, involving just the city. <laughs> I guess that's pretty cool. But uh, either way, Campos is going to be here playing the ball to Munoz. A big save by the Valencia goalkeeper 
as it's actually a very interesting Spanish Cup final, of course, obviously being Valencia versus Gijon. Who would not expect that? But uh, a big finish in the end that was to make things 1-0 from Locatelli. They have a very strong side, so I guess I can see why this is maybe the, the draw in the end. But now Santiago Munoz played into some space, has a chance to finish, and he does near post. Keeps that keeper's feet in stone, and he is made of stone. Because he, I don't know, I was trying to make a really cool analogy or something, but I couldn't think of anything. But 1-1. Uh, one, one. So let's move on now. 69th minute. Nice. Marquez going to play the ball through to Santiago Munoz. And the dream, the one and only Santiago Munoz is able to put us through 2-1. He's always had a very interesting career. Very uh, high, you know, highly touted Mexican prospect. He ha- came up pretty quickly and seemed like he was going to, on the rise and he ends up going to Newcastle and he's kind of just sitting in those weird reserves. That's one thing I'm a huge fan of is the whole uh, U23s. I feel like it's just not a very good place to develop in England. But uh, in the end, 2-2 is made in stoppage time, the final minute of stoppage time, and it's going to be going again. Another extra time uh, offering we're going to have here. So we'll see how this one goes. Obviously, the Valencia fans... Valencia supporters are going crazy at the last minute equalizer. And a couple little chances here. A header not put on frame from Valencia. Quinones is going to be played through. And fortunately hits the post 1v1. He was very clinical earlier on in, in some of these matches. But did not show that same clinicalness here. But uh, now moving on in the 111th minutes. End up trying to win the ball. Didn't really work out. But a huge save by Costa. Just super manning that hoe over there. And a big miss that was hitting the post. Just tons of bottled chances from both sides here. Now Marquez pushing forward. He's going to play the ball to Quinones. 1v1. Can he finish the chance? No, he cannot. Bottlers, bottlers, bottlers. Going to go to penalties now. And uh, penalties are always fun for me because I'm not really good at them. But uh, got to just kind of make some saves. Make your chances. We got a big save there from Costa. Make us go up 2-1. Uh, and now... A chance to go up again but unfortunately we do not do well in that opportunity so now three t- all even three three looks like our chance may be coming soon is going to be going to some of the later latter end of our of our uh, penalty kick kick takers moving on to the sixth round of penalties valencia hits theirs we hit ours thankfully in a big spot uh and again a do or die kick marquez coming up big who's been Quality for us throughout, but Fouquier, the Valencia player, is going to hit that over the bar. So our chance, Caceres, a player who we bought from Club America, he, can he hit this in the corner? And he does. And so in the end, we win the, the Spanish Cup in a, a beautiful fashion. A beautiful, beautiful fashion. How cute. I love that. So we go on. We're able to celebrate. And the celebration... It will be. It's a celebration, bitches. It is. So, yes. Let's get to it. Fast forward through it. And, uh... Yeah, it's cute. They're all dancing together. The big celebration would be for the possible Liga Trophy, which we are certainly in the running for. Uh, as you can see here. But, uh... Yeah. It's a interesting race between us and Real Madrid. We actually had the 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 advantage, and the last is going to go down to the last last uh, match of the season. Eighty six points, Madrid eighty four points. So it's all us, all up to us against Real Sociedad to come up with the big moments. But you can see our team is just so, I think, maxed out in some ways. I, I think this has to be the end point, no matter what. I mean, you got Tavares up to eighty four. Of course, guys like Oraguera up to 85. Pedro Lee is up to 90. Oh, dying potential OP. 87. Jeremy Marquez. Fernando Otero up to 89. Quinones is up to 86. Uh, so, feel like it's kind of the end point of this. Munoz up to 81. Didn't really have the huge boost, but still. That's why I was like, no matter what, what even if we don't win the trophy, I just feel like uh, this team can't really get any better without overhauling the squad, squad entirely. And I don't want to do that. But a huge save in the third minute f- from Costa against Sociedad. Now played into some space is Quinones. He's going to play the ball here to Marquez. Who's going to play one more to Diaz. 
And one of the original players on this squad is going to be the one putting this in the back of the net to make things 1-0 in the 11th minute. Can we continue to rack on some goals and comfortably win La Liga? We shall see. Now, Jeremy Marquez is playing the Batu Guerrera, and he's going to hit this one beautifully. No chance at that being saved. Basically roofed it, and that is a beautiful goal. It looks like we may have things locked up, but I saw see that may have an answer here, and you will certainly uh, see it if it happens. But <laughs> Diaz is going to play the ball through over the top to Santiago Munoz. He is through. I don't know what that tackle attempt was. And he's going to cut the ball back to Francisco. He's going to finish the chance. And 3-0 in the 24th minutes. And now it's going to be another celebration, it looks like. Uh, very simple, easy victory. The thing with, with this game is once you just kind of get your team going, I feel like the game just has so much momentum where you can end up you know, doing things, things like winning a Champions League, like winning, winning some sort of trophy. I mean, it's a big 5-0 victory. And I think this was a really fun rebuild for me to do, bringing in some players from the Mexican League. I've always been a big fan of the Mexican League uh, growing up. That was really what was always on TV all the time. I, my uh, uncle was a big Chivas fan, so I always watched them, especially in some of the glory days, seeing guys like Wolf about these. So it was always cool and stuff like that. So, yeah, and I always followed it. I don't follow the same way I probably did when I was younger because now I'm not. I have to work and all that, take care of family. But, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this rebuild um, and the way I did this. I just I don't like maxing out players, you know, completely and making things uninteresting in some ways. If you guys kind of like this style, let me know. I mean, if you guys want to see the in the end where it's by, like, every high potential, high rated player or whatever. But uh, in the end, you see some amazing performances from our players. I mean, uh, guys like Quinones Diaz, Otero, who's from us from the start, Marquez, Barguera. For some guys we brought in did well also but with that thank you all for tuning in hope you guys enjoyed this rebuild hit that like button i love you all can't wait for fifa 23 to have some more rebuild content for you with that thank you all for tuning in. i love you i'll be saying out now and i'll catch you guys later